Hey guys, welcome back to the podcast. And if you guys don't know, my voice sounds a lot crisper. You might be wondering, why is that? Well, it's because I got a better mic. Because I thought, you know what, if I'm podcasting, let's make sure the content we're providing is just a little bit better than halfway decent. Anyways, we got a couple things I want to talk about this episode of the podcast. Some very serious having to do with YouTube drama. You could probably already guess where I'm going with this. And probably some that I want to touch upon because it's my own personal view and it's my own personal aspect of responsibility when it comes to things. But let's begin, shall we? So the first thing I want to talk about is... Yes, the whole David Dobrik situation. What do I feel about it? I'm just a small YouTuber. only have 35 subscribers. Like, what is my personal take for it? Well, as a person who... What's the best way to say this? As a person who does is not afraid to show his dark side, I will say that I'm a, I'm, I never thought David Dobrik was cool or dope or anything like that. I always felt like he definitely did... A lot for his content I could say that and there's a stuff that he went I believe a little way too far beyond he treated people and manipulated people like a toxic partner and his only thing was it's all in the name of fun I think he really did misuse a lot of the people in his vlogs but that's my own personal opinion I'm not gonna go too much into that what I do want to go into content what I do want to go into about is their um their whole apologies and what they actually did because i know a lot of people are still thinking oh well, well david didn't do anything really mm, didn't he well he did so if you guys are not aware of the story there's a whole article from insider and the whole article basically says this hold on the whole article pertains to dirty dom a former member of the vlog squad who at a time posted on his instagram saying you know what i want to have a force uh, a five sum so he was like if anyone's down hit me up he did do that he hit he um got a lot of hit ups a, a girl a, a girl and her friends were like oh yeah we'll come through but when they got there they made it known that they didn't actually want to hook up they just wanted to hang out with the vlog squad they were just chilling and vibing but uh, like i already know the type of people like these guys are like they got they don't really got any good charm they don't know how to have fun and just be genuine to them they're like no we need something that's over the top like these girls are not going to do anything over the top i mean maybe they would have maybe if you were just you know not a total douchebag and actually talk to them he probably could have gotten his five some or even if he didn't get the five some like it is what it is you could have had just a cool night out but of course because you know david wants good content he tells his friends hey you know what Go pick up some liquor. Let's get these girls drunk. Mind you, yes, these girls are over 18. They're in their 20s, but they're not of the legal drinking age. You guys might be wondering, well, that doesn't really matter in high school. Yes, 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 yes. But when you're like doing this on camera for a video, the little things really do count. And you can't really be playing that card of like, oh, but they're 18. They made their own decisions. No, from what the Internet's going to see, David, is that for you used alcohol to influence minors to get into through not minors uh people who are under the legal drinking age you use them to get what you wanted which was quality content and guess and it's not really quality it's just stuff that is kind of shady well not even kind of shady really shady kind of disgusting and i for one i have a big thing about not liking to do that to girls i think uh getting with a drunk girl is like disgustingly weird i think it's very predatory and for you to set up this whole situation makes you seem like a huge predator david i'm sorry but it's the truth now of course david did not sleep with any of the women that are reporting this to the insider but he did profit off of it and he did make a video on it he saw the content he knew the stakes he has the most to lose from this that's why for him to like make this video and him not to know like why he's sorry or for him to make a two minute and 36 or 32 second apology saying i'm sorry and doesn't even want to say what he did was wrong or even address what he did kind of spits in the face of the, the victims and i know a lot of people are trying to shift the blame around they're trying to make sure that dom gets the heat they're trying to make sure that um 
Scotty Sire's video didn't come off as too um, victim blaming. They're just making the wrong moves. And all I have to say on that is, David, if you sincerely apologize to your fans, addressing what you did, addressing what you did, not just touching it, addressing it, you could get a you could not you couldn't get away with it, but you could move forward and past this and you could actually be better. But guess what, David? That would mean you'd have to actually be a decent human being. And on the Go for Go podcast, we stay decent, we stay positive vibes. And David, you're not a vibe, bro. You're literally the person who can who wants to take the joke way too far and is going to get somebody's feelings hurt. And it's not and then for you. It's all fun and games. But the second this gets turned around on you, you start you probably the same person who throws a fit or doesn't want to add that in the video because it makes you look bad. Yes, I get it. A lot of people who want to argue he's done charity. Well, guess what? Nice people can do bad things, too. Doesn't mean they should get away with it. It means they should also apologize just like bad people have to do. They no one gets a fucking free, you know, get out a free card. Everyone has to answer to their crimes. It's, it's, it's just the way it is. I'm an asshole. That doesn't give me an excuse to be an asshole. But I do. will I will apologize if my assholery gets out of hand. It, it that's just, that's what I'll do. I'm not going to I'm going to apologize if I say something that goes a little too far for David. He doesn't see that that way. He says, as long as I'm having fun and laughing and it's all fun and jokes, there's no such thing as too far because it was in the name of comedy. Even though you're not a comedian, David, you still probably use that line. I bet <sighs> it just pisses me off, man. Like, dude, he a lot of people. He tried all his lawyers his people are trying to distance him from this whole situation, saying, well, he didn't sleep with them, but you set the video up. You decided when you heard your friend wanted to have a fight. So you're like, you know what? I want that for a video. I want to capture the content. And when when the reality of that situation hit that you needed to get alcohol to get this, guess what? Alcohol is not consent. And for um, someone who has been used like through alcohol, you do not know what you're doing. You do not. You can't comprehend what's going on. And that is not fun. That is not fun whatsoever. And you feel sick afterwards knowing that someone thought, you know, seeing you fucked up was an easy, an easy way in. Trust me. It is not. It is gross. You feel horrible. Like it's disgusting. It's not, it, you, you shouldn't have to loosen somebody up just because they're not doing something you want for your, for your, uh, what your vlog, your five minute vlog. Like, dude, get the fuck over yourself, man. Like I could see why like him and Liza broke up. I guess Liza didn't want to have a camera in her face 24 fucking seven, but oh, David wants David gets right. David has to do this, bro. You're like the same age as me, probably even younger. And you already think that you can get away with just laughing stuff off. Okay. We get it Buy your friend a fucking Lamborghini, but do you, you think that fixes things you think? So oh, it's all good. I'll just tag him in the video or I'll just pay the money so I can buy their, uh, permission for this video you think that's being a good friend do you think buying people for their dignity is like is something that's worth uh i don't know millions of views it's not it's not it's dehumanizing and for you to just go straight to that i'll I'll just buy you out just because you know you don't want to have to put up with bro i really don't want that video up like just because you know that's going to come up like to hear how he treats his friends at corinna on that it's just very toxic especially to to kids who are thinking oh well i i mean i don't want to be like jake paul but i do want to be like david dobrik you're gonna have like these like kids uh i know hdh3 and uh frenemies the, it's the same branch but ethan and trisha and ethan and elo have all talked about how dangerous this is because you're gonna start having kids think they can do the same thing that david dobrik does without the repercussions no 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 they're, these kids are gonna suffer because they're gonna be thinking oh we can get girls drunk and make them do funny shit no you don't do that you don't you don't do that at all first off like i've seen some people try to do scummy shit like that some people like that i used to work with and stuff i'm not gonna name these names but i've seen them like at a party one time uh the home like this one guy got this like one of our friends was drunk he didn't know the chick but you know she's a little she's very handsy and she's very um touchy when she's drunk homeboy was trying to take her to a room upstairs at my buddy's old house and i remember i was like yo bro what you doing bro he goes nah man me me and her just trying to chill in the room i'm like nah she's fucked up she's not chilling with you like that and he was like, nah, man, come on. You know, we're just kicking it. I'm like, dude, fuck. Like, and I, I remember I had to tell him, dude, no. Okay, no. 
because she left she and I, I it, it was just a fucking night but seeing that kind of shit really pisses me off because i'll i'll never understand what's so appealing about it because there's nothing appealing about it whatsoever there's nothing appealing about a girl who can't even stand on her own who can't even comprehend where she's at i don't see that as alluring whatsoever if you do you're probably a predator no lie i'm gonna be straight with you if you don't like that um i'm putting you in that category well it's probably because you probably are look be honestly no man looks at drunk woman and goes damn I can't say thing if a girl's really high, like anything. If I hate when people do this, like that stigma of like, come on, girl, come over and smoke, and then you try to get them really high just to like fuck them. Like, dude, like you aren't slick, you aren't cool, you are literally trash. You're garbage. You're trash. Uh, everything you do, everything you think that is me being charming or you being charming is not it really isn't it's 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 predatory behavior i talked about this i think on the first episode about predatory behavior and how you're using you're using what you have over somebody to get what you want and guess what david did that he used the fact that these girls were fans of the vlog squad and they used their fame to like persuade these girls into being in a comfortable situation letting their guards down and almost literally um intoxicating themselves to the point where one of them couldn't even stand if you read this article this article is is, is really good and it, it is it is rough man it is rough like i i dude you have to read this article because i think one thing said is like the, the one thing that really like got me like disgusted was when the friend said one of the friends said and who actually did sleep with dom because he did get a three-way in this was i had to have i had to finish him off so he would leave her alone because she was blacking out and she was unresponsive like what the fuck what like like i don't understand it when guys are like oh she's asleep let me wake her up like this like i i don't i really don't like dude is it that is is that bad it's that bad for you really it's literally that bad for you like oh i got a boner let me wake her up <laughs> like is it really that bad for you like just fucking jack off or something man like it, it throws me for a loop how people are like oh i'm really horny but i have a girlfriend she should, she should just do it for me like no dude you're gonna it just it just throws me for a loop and a lot of people are like well these girls came to the house they know they should know what they're gonna get into should they know what they're getting into they were just going to have a good time is that their definition of a good time that they can send to that being the only good time no they said they were uncomfortable david strictly said they didn't want to do this but with a little bit of convincing why do you need to convince somebody to do something they don't want to do that already sounds suspect enough like i don't even know man like if people still defend him and say like oh well he did nothing wrong so that doesn't make any sense we we prosecute people who produce child pornography for a reason man but they, even if they're acting in it or not they're still producing it and they're making money off of this and guess what this right here this taking advantage of a girl while she's drunk that is rape and guess what he did he made money off of that yes i said the r word i said the hard r word real quick why because this is the allegations that are being put although he didn't do anything he produced it and made money off of it in some sense he's worse than dom he really is because although dom did do these actions that is something he did do when he's not off the clock david made money off of this let that sink in that is in my in my opinion way worse because not only did you basically condone this from happening condone this happening you made sure that you edited the footage to where it didn't look like that and you decided to make money off of it to all his fans and friends who protect him and think oh well you know david's done this david's done that oh well so that should excuse him for the doing these things right that's crazy that's wild that doesn't make a fucking lick of sense in my book it doesn't matter what you've done for this world you could have you could have been um giving you know the best gucci clothes to the poor you do shit like this this does not excuse you you still have to answer for it so david answer for this you and your goons you need to answer for this you need to make an actual response to the allegations being pressed against you guys and some of these are even allegations they have cold heart proof you have past members telling how their experiences with you guys are. 
it is literally sickening to hear that somebody like this like somebody who's portrayed himself to be this 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 happy-go-lucky guy this oh i never in controversy controversy guy controversies uh, but like it, it sickens me that this type of person can, can do whatever he wants because he's like no i'm the good guy though i would never do that no you're not the good guy you're just pretending to be the good guy you just play that character so that way you don't have to feel guilty about everything you do in this world see i know i'm not a good guy that doesn't mean i get to do what the hell i want it means when i do what i want i make sure that if somebody doesn't like it i justify that or i let them know why i do it doesn't make it any better doesn't make it any worse but they do hear it from my from me and i address everything i'm not saying i do fucked up shit like this no i'm i'm nowhere near this level baby i'm nowhere near like manipulating someone to this degree for money like this but you need to answer for this david because guess what you have people who are looking at you that are like could be your younger brothers and sisters you need to provide an example for them especially if that's the way you're marketing your vlogs as inspirational videos inspirational videos wow david wow trying to make jason have three ways with him and trisha that's inspirational trying to get five sums that's inspirational wow okay let's let's give a little clap way to go david you truly are inspirational your videos are truly changing lives jesus christ man i just you know like it doesn't surprise me it really doesn't surprise me i've never liked him and i've always thought you know what he doesn't showing he's not showing he's like people are like oh he's only wholesome youtuber like like it's like jake paul and the like, except he doesn't do anything that's controversial i was like really and then when my one of my friends was trying to sh sell me on his video like no dude he's the dopest guy in the world he's so cool dude like women want him and he's just like so plain looking he's just like whatever and he like like all these women want him i still didn't get it i still don't i never got it you know what it is i can't trust somebody who doesn't have a dark side I didn't, that's uh from avengers but like it's the truth i can't trust anybody who hasn't already done anything shitty because guess what like i'll trust somebody i'll trust the person who's killed more than the person who says they've never thought about killing why because at least one person is honest what they're saying and doing while the other one's lying it's the truth man it's the truth and i know like he doesn't he hates all this heat that's coming onto him because he on in his probably actual opinion he thinks he did nothing wrong he thinks these girls came into the house they knew what they what they knew they answered the message they should know what this was about so you're saying just because they answered a message and they wanted to come over they they can't ever they can't take back their consent they can't change their consent from being you know i was kind of down saying i'm not really down i don't want to do this for camera for like the vlog like that doesn't like that doesn't excuse it that doesn't excuse it no they've said they don't want to do this they are uncomfortable with what you're proposing and for you to to have to convince them to change their mind and to put it on camera nonetheless you are an idiot you are literally scum you're garbage you need to pay for this and guess what if you do address this and address it fully not just a two minute video because it doesn't it, it it doesn't make it all right it's like somebody like krista Ela, who literally almost lost everything literally lost movie deals he got pulled out of movies and stuff for his allegations now that doesn't excuse christy Elo's action uh, actions it doesn't he's even said that it doesn't excuse what i did he he acknowledges that he fucked up and he made a whole hour video explaining exactly where he did it and how sorry he was and guess what i don't know why christy Elo's back in society and he's out of cancel culture because he owned up to his mistakes and is trying to move forward he's not trying to forget him he's moving forward from those things and he's trying to be a better person david if you could just do that guess what a lot of people including myself would have a lot more respect for you because you don't own up to it. remember dom is truly the one in this video who did the, like fuck shit but david you produced it there's a reason why dom says in this video thanks david you produced this whole skit and you got somebody you got a, a couple young ladies hurt from this 
and there's probably more young ladies that you guys hurt because of stuff like this you need to address it and apologize to all your victims all your victims of the joke going way too far whether it be it should be seth should be trisha it should be these girls it should be all of them it really should and it it, it just throws me for a loop how someone like this can get away with this or not get so much heat or barely when the fire starts coming there's more there's more there's more underneath that's what's crazy is the second this got its traction from h3h3 every there was everything was coming out of the woodworks of people revealing the true david Dobrik, and it's not for clout it's not for anything like that it was literally because they want their stories told because guess what you know what sucks in this world is when you have when you want to say your when you want to tell your own truth and nobody wants to listen everybody wants to tear you down sometimes there's three truths there's your side my side and the truth like the actual the actual actual truth and guess what I, this is what it seems like we've heard we've heard his stories we've heard everybody else's and it seems like in the middle everything's cooperating to the way these people are addressing it and you guys are just you know trying to rewrite the story any way you guys can that makes you guys look good no all i could say on this all like this all i could truly say is i think dave dobrik is garbage his two minute apology was literally spit in the face of people who have been victimized by him um a lot of people can argue well these people are not really hurt by this no there's actual hurt from this he purposely did this to seth because seth was black and he had who this was literally racially motivated because he thought you know what it'd be funny if we cut a black guy from gompton to make out with a guy destroy his street cred make everybody look at him as a token black friend and now the black communities and look at him like wow go back to your uh your white master that's fucked up to, to kind of to make that kind of to, to, to get that narrative in your head thinking you know what that's what we should do to seth you know what's also fucked up hearing your buddy's girlfriend say hey i'm not comfortable with you know you promoting a threesome between me and my boyfriend and constantly goading her saying come on come on you should do it like why not do it come on you guys would be down do it like what kind of friend does that I've, in my life i've never told my friend you know what you should do bro you should go do that. You should get a three-way between your girl. Like you should. Like I've never talked to my friends' girlfriends that way. That's so disrespectful. That is that spits on their relationship. Even if I didn't like their girlfriends, I still wouldn't propose that. That's still very disrespectful to, especially when they're telling me I'm very uncomfortable with that whole situation. Uh, why would I even? Why would I even keep pushing that matter? It just sounds like you're just a manipulative kid who's playing God and thinks he can get away with everything, can get, can have his own world and get away with anything he wants to do. But guess what? You're in the real world where your actions bear consequences. And guess what, buddy? You have to answer for them. I don't care how wholesome you try to play. I don't care how many friends you try to make, make them make videos saying how sorry they are. Because guess what? People see through the bullshit, David. Your fans aren't just going to like you know take your side on this they're seeing through the bullshit they're seeing everything that's going off you know and you know what they're not happy and you know what if for somebody who actually thought you were like a, a probably decent human being i can honestly i'm not happy with which what you've done either i think you need to truly answer for this uh, you need to make an actual statement that isn't just bullshit and if you can do that i can i can gain a little bit more respect from you oh my god youtube drama guys youtube drama i know i'm not i'm not worried i'm not really a channel to cover this stuff but it's definitely something that just plays in my head and just really irritates me is when somebody thinks they can like oh but i didn't do it like they keep trying to shift the blame like they're in fucking high school i hate i hate these frat fr frat people who think not fat i said frat who think oh well if the girl wants it like they just think it's a woman's a toy they're just something they use to manipulate something like a prop it is disgusting it is horrible i don't stand for that whatsoever and especially if someone's like hey you know what i feel uncomfortable with, like you guys trying to get me drunk at a party that shit weirds me out dude if i was there if i was part of david's friends and i'm like no dude if these girls don't want to drink or have like do this you don't have to like convince them convincing them no just let them if they want to they want to they don't they don't that's done deal we don't need to do any convincing like just because you want to get good content like dude 
you could pick up any side hoe in the street and she'd probably be down but no you want to get these 20 20 20 year old girls who are fans of yours you want to use your fame to to pressure these girls into doing something that they are not sold on doing wow david you truly are a role model you truly deserve to be on the not bullying tour you are truly a good guy my fucking ass anyways let's let's jump off this topic because i'm i'm already gonna spend like i already spent like a quarter of the time on this uh talking about the david dobrik stuff all i know is i don't if you still if you're still a fan of him that's cool bro i'm not gonna judge you i'm just saying i see through bullshit and i i I, i've always known there was something off about him i've always known it well that's just me um again i don't blame anybody who still follows him i don't blame anyone who still wants to like follow his content i mean for god's sakes if he apologizes for everything and you know he you know makes his amends i could see i could see a lot of people who fell off of him coming back to him and thinking all right that's that's what i want to hear i want to see i want to see you uh pay him you know pay your dues and you know address what you've done he could save his career but if he keeps doing this like two minute video crap having his friends talk and fight his battles for him it's not going to end well for his career and he's going to quickly fall off the fall off the youtube platform okay anyways yeah i just, I just want to talk about that i just want to rip that bandit off i just want to leave that in the dust but um let's talk about what else could we talk about for the go for go podcast we talked a lot about spirituality last episode so i think it'd be cool to touch upon um like some stuff when it comes to get at energies and like, kind of my own philosophy when it comes to people um so i i, I always i always pose this question what do you guys prefer vibes or chemistry and a lot of people always wonder like what is that supposed to mean well vibes are simple vibes are literally just the that natural instinctual like spiritual connection that you have with somebody off the bat like literally like it's that person who just meshes with your soul in a way where you feel like you've known this person for years while um while you know chemistry is this kind of relationship that you've developed and it has its own rhythm it, it's it, it has its ups and downs it, it kind of goes the way it goes but it's strictly just based off of like i could even say circumstance or like it's it's just like vibes is like this i mean this is the best way to explain it you ever just gone to a concert or a show or something you see somebody with a cool shirt and like dude that's a dope shirt and he goes oh my god you know what this shirt is and then you guys kind of just riff raff and then you're like damn bro you know you're you're a cool dude like you kind of just naturally connect with them and then little did you know you guys are just like become best friends like in a second chemistry is that one person that that you sit next to in class who you guys just talk here and there and then eventually you guys because you guys are paired up all the time and you guys are next to each other you develop um you develop a communication dialogue and then eventually you become formal then you start talking about informal things and then you kind of develop a somewhat friendship based off of it it's it's very i wouldn't even say it's robotic at times it can be very natural but it, it's just not the same as developing a, a relationship through that instinct that that instinctual spiritual bond that vibes usually is and I think that's very apparent in these days and age. And I think that's what I I always pose that question to anybody. It doesn't matter if, you know, you're trying to like see what's good with me or if you're just trying to, you know, hang with me. That question is a powerful thing because it's the truth. There's people I've met in this world. I've literally met in a second and I'm like, these are my type of people. Then there's people I've learned and I've, you know, after hanging out with and learning how they work and what they do i kind of learn how to maneuver around them and i think it's it's the way the best way to put it is there's people i mess with and there's people that i know how to talk to and i think that's that's kind of how vibes and chemistry work is like i know what you're about like i can talk to you but like vibing is like a whole different level i feel like i've known you for years um i say i i pose this question because i think it's important to like for me as a single man who's uh just just living his best life just having fun 
um i always like to understand like what are like what do people or do people think the same sort of way i do like when i talk to a girl and i'm just like vibing with her if we're on the same vibe i'm gonna like i'm gonna say it was good but it like there's there's moments when like you don't get that vibe and it's just like yes on you know we talk there's something that you could be there but it's just not there emotionally or spiritually is that matter in a relationship well yes and no it does matter in a relationship if you want this relationship to be more purposeful but if it's just simple and very like at best communicational where you guys are just talking or you guys are just um you know vibing and stuff or even if you guys are just not even vibing if you guys are just being cordial that's what i was looking for um yeah then chemistry is fine but but when you like you can just talk to a chick and then eventually you guys are cool but vibes is that is that thing that makes everything better it's that that feeling in your heart that pounding in your chest that then that second that person feels like the most important person in the world and that's the kind of feeling that i i truly do enjoy it's that feeling like you've known this person this person knows you yet you guys haven't really even established that far in dialogue while chemistry you you guys eventually naturally through time established that dialogue but it, it just doesn't have that connection i don't know that's just me that's just something i enjoy a lot as a single man um I, I think a lot of people don't agree with that kind of mindset. I know yesterday I talked about the friend zone and stuff. And oh, not yesterday, last episode. I, I briefly I briefly touched on the subject of the friend zone and why I think that's stupid or dumb. And I feel like I've kind of gotten better with it. And I don't know if anybody's ever seen the show Kim Possible. Has anyone seen that show? Um, it's an old cartoon. And a lot of people always said, well, you know, Ron Stoppable got out of the friend zone and he all he did was tell, you know, Kim that he really liked her. Mm, not accurate. If you watch the show and you watch the dialogue, it's kind of obvious that Kim Possible always liked Ron Stoppable. She just never let those feelings be like, no, it, it's pretty obvious. Like a lot of episodes hint that Kim has always had a thing for Ron. She's always been his best friend. She's always thought he was embarrassing, but in a cute way, like she's had her own crushes, but like the best way to put it is Ron is the first person in her life who's never made her, um, who's been there for her since day one. And she's always kind of looked for him for strength, looked for him for dynamic. Like he's the, she like as much as she can do almost anything, it's because Ron's by her side. And I think she's always known that. She's always known that she liked Ron. And I think even when the whole emotions episode with the, the emotion chips, it's revealed that she's kind of like it, it amplifies her emotions. It doesn't change them. It doesn't do anything to them. It just amplifies them. So for some reason, Shigo loves Draken. That's a thing. And of course, Kim Possible is Ron. It's just, it just amplifies those emotions. That's something that she's always had and always wanted. It's not because like it's it's always been there basically so he was never in the friend zone ron just put himself there naturally he just wanted her as a friend and it wasn't until he noticed her in that way or even he realized his true feelings for her is when when he made it when he made it known even she was like oh i didn't know you felt that way about me kind of alluding to the fact that yeah she's kind of probably thought about ron that way a couple times already in her life but because you know she he never made the move or he never wanted to change the status of the relationship it it makes sense why you know she decided okay well i guess we are just friends and you see that a lot in in um in reality i would say i mean i remember in middle school i used to think i wasn't the most attractive person but i really did friends on a couple of girls and a lot of people would be like, oh, you didn't know so-and-so liked you or you didn't. I was like, what? No, you're, she liked me. You're kidding. Like, I was always like, you know, that's that's I wish they would have told me. 
I really wish they would have told me. It's a wild world, man. So wild. <sighs> it throws me for a loop, and I think it's just because as people, like, we're very, like, if you're not, like, again, it goes back to social, socially aware of people, you, you can't really pick up those hints too much. You can't really even, like, address those things. But I think there's something powerful in that kind of aspect. You know what I'm saying? It's wild, man. It really is. And I don't know if I talked about it last episode, but I was talking about how, like, like, did you ever remember, like, in high school, like, like the feeling of love, how intense that was? Like, it was just wild. It would drive us to the, to the moon and back, all because, um, you know, someone just told us they liked us and stuff. Like, it, it, it's so, it's so weird. It's so fun. It's so nice, and it still throws me for a loop to this day. Oh my lord, I don't know, guys. I'm, I'm I really do think like people who um say friend zone a lot are just people who don't understand relationships they don't understand how to correctly be in one they don't understand how to uh to actually accept the ones that they're in it's it's very very interesting stuff um what else do i want to talk about you know what i think i do want to talk about i think this is something like really um big because I, I I find myself doing it a lot and it's it, one thing is trying your best to give the people who you are interested in attention um I I, I, I am horrible horrible at this I think the like my best advice for like the, this is like me a little advice portion is if you have trouble connecting with people that you really want to connect with or you feel like a sort a sort of disconnect because you've been busy with work or you've been busy like I don't know doing what else you do it's really hard to like reestablish connections. It's really hard to go about it and be like, hey, long time no talk. It's been like two, three weeks and I haven't said hi in a while. It's it's really hard to maintain conversation when there's so many people that you want to be able to conversate with. And so now you have to prioritize who do you want to, you know, make imp- the word important conversation seems kind of cruel but it's the truth you want to you want to be able to pick who do you want to be with or who do i want to talk to the most and how i go about that and life is unpredictable so sometimes there's a day where i probably don't get hit up by nobody and the day i want to do something i'm getting hit up by 15 different people saying what am i doing what am i doing what am i doing what am i doing i'm just like dude like where were you two days ago it's it's always so wild how many times this happens in our life and it's always it's always hard to keep you know giving the attention to the people that we want to give it to the most and are the most deserving of it it, it it's it's a it's a hard thing to like compromise or even just balance out my only um my only advice on this is just just fill it out pick who you feel like is um who's most apparent in your life and who's most needed do your best to hit them up um be patient with them don't just get mad because the one day you're free no one wants to talk to you just take it day by day enjoy it um make sure that you let them know the situations that are going on with you i think that's one thing too is maintaining some sort of communication with friends i'm horrible at this but you guys can probably be better i'm a capricorn i mean communication talking to people it's really hard, especially when I'm like caught up doing something that I would like doing or making money. <laughs> but um, yeah, dude, I it, I really think if you if you're having trouble keeping attention spans of people you're interested in or even your own friends, I would just make it like just try to delve at least an hour or two hours a day to text them, to talk to them, see how they're doing. It's uh, it, those little things can really do a lot for you people, and I think you'll find that you know you get the most bang out of your buck for that if you're able to just talk to your friends here and there or even just like take time out of like two hours of a day to call that one friend that you haven't seen in a while and just be like hey bro how you how you been I'm, i was thinking about you or something like it's it's really hard to go about that especially like in an age where we feel like uh calling on the phone not my big thing but it's it's something that if you push yourself little by little you'll 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 get habit of it 
and it'll be simpler for you. I feel like I should be doing that, but I'm horrible and I'm not going to lie. I'm just, I, I can't, um, I just really can't do anything about that. Um, but what else did I want to talk about? What else did I want to talk about? Um, oh, I remember what I want to talk about. I wanted to talk about, um, shit. Now I lost it. Oh my Lord, guys. I'm so sorry. This is so much dead air. I had like a couple of topics written down in my head, but I was like, what else want to talk about? Um, I guess we could talk about, uh, oh fuck. What is a fun topic to talk about? Um, I guess I, mm, damn, I really don't know what to talk about. Uh, you know what I did? I, I was recently watching the other day that I really, really, I really liked a lot. And it was a mo- It was a show based off an indie movie. And if you guys have Hulu or FX, you probably know the show I'm referring to. It is called a teacher and oh my God, is it amazing? A teacher is a wild, wild show. So the premise of a teacher is this female teacher. She's like, I want to say in her thirties, probably 28 or something. She, um, she goes to teach at her old high school. And of course, like these teens, you know, being on the 17, 18, look at her and she's like, oh, she's a, she's a hottie. That's cool. Uh, they, they come up stoned to the, to this diner where this one dude works and the teacher's there and then she meets the kid and they're talking and they're just kind of vibing and she's kind of giving him like a, they're just chatting and she gives him a ride home and everything and of course to him it's just like a simple crush he's like oh my teacher's cute that's cool for for her it's it's this dangerous thing because she later then like the show is so explicit and i love it um she basically plays with herself and then her husband comes home and then wakes her up from this dream she had with uh, the student. And it, it really paints this this power dynamic, especially through the series. It really paints this power dynamic of at first being in a very inappropriate relationship to being grooming to just being after that just predatory. And a lot of people think, well, how is that predatory? I mean, and, you know, it's like, well, one, she's using her position as a teacher to get into, well, lack for a better word get into um his life and then she eventually uses uh his feelings for her and she uses his her feelings for him and grows on that see they loot i think the third episode or fourth episode they have sex and she is he's still 17 and she's around like 28 29 and you have to understand like a lot of people like oh that's not a big deal he's a guy he probably wants it Mm, he probably does want it but emotionally he's unable to comprehend the proper way to um actually be with this person and i think what what a lot of people like don't understand when it comes to grooming or any of these relationships are why they're so inappropriate is because this person has more power over this person than you would think like for the main character the boy at least um he doesn't get a say like in this relationship honestly he doesn't get to be mad happier than she he kind of just is there as a piece of meat as a as a somewhat stress reliever as a way for this woman to rebel like his feelings are gonna get hurt at the end of the day he's being used and that's all he truly is to this woman is just someone she could use and take her own frustrations out her own insecurities everything in her life that is giving her stress this is the one thing that she uses is stress relief she doesn't see him as a person and even if she does see him as a person the dynamic is so no at 90 10 it's it's not fair for him because of course he's younger and he has more responsibilities to uphold like it is not fair to this kid at all through that pressure that she will put on him if he doesn't want to act or he doesn't want to do anything and I think one episode right after the episode they have sex, she makes the boundaries known. She lets, she puts this like stress on him, and then it's this kind of, this kind of mind game where he's like, so do you want to like, are you gonna, you're gonna be attractive for me, 
and do all this stuff for me but at the same time too you want to push me in the dark it's like it, it's just very like especially for a kid who to him this is love is is heartbreaking it's it's so crushing and i don't think like a lot of people understand that they just think oh he's a dude he's living the the, the high school fantasy he is but he's not but there's only so f so far people there's only a certain amount of people who at that age can comprehend the feelings they're going through for him he's someone who's just gone through girlfriend through girlfriend this is the first time he's been with somebody who's like somewhat mentored him taught him and made him feel safe a person his age couldn't do that because he has to learn how to do that for himself but when you when you shelter somebody with that off the bat and make them feel like they have a place to like escape then you have you have a lot of power over them but yeah guys this that show is literally amazing i i highly recommend it i really liked it a lot um the, like seldomly do we see this in any um media <laughs> excuse me Solemnly do we see this in media where the woman is the predator. We mostly see men being the predator. It's very sleazy, very disgusting. But even when the teacher does it, there's still there's still a bit of sleaze in it. There's still a bit of um like deception and like very like it's it's just very disgusting in a weird way. I know it seems romanticized, it seems attractive, but what you see what this kid goes through and how she like she's willing to like destroy her own life and marriage for this it is it is it is it is i it's, to say the least it is interesting it is very interesting but yeah a teacher on hulu or fx whatever you guys got check that out it's really good because you know like i think grooming is one thing that's a big thing in this day and age i mean the whole um what is it tokyo's revenge he got caught up for that shit and i i, I don't i don't understand it i don't see the appeal of it if you like it's one see the, the, the it, this is different from this is it this is what i find different from grooming i think i've already talked about this it's like it's one thing if you like you see your sister's friend like let's let's say like you and your sister are not that close like maybe you guys are close but you go away for college you go away you move you do your own thing you go traveling you come back and her one friend that's always had a crush on you she's probably of age now and you guys are like she's 20 you're like like i don't know 35 or something and you're like, oh, wow, like, how's it going? Like, it's been a while. Like, he used to be a kid when I said, like, that is a little bit easier to digest. A little bit, in the very least, than you being, like, 23 and she being, like, 15. And then from, like, three years, you've just been, like, sexting her and flirting with her and, you know, telling her, like, oh, wait till you turn 18. Then we can really have fun. Like, that is literally hands-on grooming. Like, you're literally making this woman out to be a wife for you and it is just tragic oh my god i finally remembered what, what did i wanted to talk about um oof this was gonna be a heavy one this this topic is literally gonna be about moving on i know i talk I've, I've been like filling the dead air with like little things that i've just been randomly jabbering about but moving on this is something i really wanted to give like a long in-depth conversation about because i feel like a lot of people don't understand what moving on is and a lot of people don't understand what the importance of moving on does see holding on to your past is just very toxic i've already said this uh, in the first two episodes first three actually i think um that holding on to your past on and like putting that weight on you all that's gonna do is hurt you and just make you feel icky it's gonna make you feel horrible you're never gonna fully move on in your life unless you let go of the past and then move on a lot of people like to hope that that one ex or that one person in their life will come back will will, will be like i'm so sorry i made a mistake please take me back and they don't understand that by doing that you don't want that because guess what when you do have that you're gonna when you, and you turn them away they're gonna be trying to thinking well why did i do that why when i wanted this more than anything in my life the second i had it i don't want it anymore you want to know why because you've already been moving on you're just thinking in the past but you guess what emotionally spiritually and even mentally you've you've grown you've you've gone through this so when you're thinking you can recapture those old feelings when you think you can recapture the those old glory days of when you guys were together they're not there anymore you guys are different people from you are everyone's a different person from a, like i want to say even a month ago it can that's how 
that quick change can happen overnight sometimes. Like some people grow apart for a reason because they're different people than they used to be. And those two people are way too different to be together. And I think a lot of these people just hope, oh, no, 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 I'll stay the same or do this and that. Guess what? They're not going to want you back after all this time. And you're not going to want them back. You think you do. But guess what? You guys are two different people now. Sometimes if people are too different and then they meet in the future when they kind of settle down and they they're you know they they've changed they're changing they're changing again of course but they're changing more closely similar that makes sense that those people those two people kind of come back together but like they're keep in mind these people are still moving forward they just happen to cross paths again but when you kind of when you when you hold yourself to this degree hoping that the past will will repeat itself hoping that the people who've hurt you in the past will you know come back to you or like you'll show them like you've made it somehow that's not how the that's not how you should be spending your energy that's not how you should be pushing energy you should be focusing all that hatred all that negativity and pushing into something positive you should be putting it into work you should be putting it into um a project you should be putting into something every time i find myself getting slightly heartbroken or even slightly like dang that shit sucks guess what i do with that energy i'm like you know what hey let's put it into something i'll go out have a nice time dance and then my energy just radiates i'll put it into my youtube stuff where i'll be doing a, a really good video and i'm like you know what i really like how i sound in this video i really like how this video came out or i put it into something else maybe i go i go to the gym and work it out like you really have to positively put these negative uh loops or these negative hiccups in your life and put them somewhere and redirect them somewhere because if you keep just focusing on them and thinking oh damn ah, oh, i hope one day she'll come back i hope one day uh, he'll come back guess what all you're doing all you're doing is just robbing yourself of an experience that you could be having now because guess where your head's at in the past where is your where should your head be at the present having a good time enjoying what life has to offer don't hold your exes selves back anymore don't don't focus on those exes that hurt you or you feel like they've destroyed your life because as long as you're breathing and as long as you have your own will they never destroyed your life they probably caused it to hiccup, but they never destroyed it. You control your life. You decide if it is destroyed or if it has meaning. So put that effort into something instead of instead of whining or complaining or looking back and thinking, damn, this ex did fuck me up. Well, if they did fuck you up, guess what? Put put that energy into something useful. Maybe write a book. Maybe um, write a TV show. Maybe... Um, dance maybe do art maybe write a song be a musician um do youtube be a content creator take pictures take up something redirect that energy into something positive stop holding on to it and not knowing whether or not it's okay to like leave tweets or tiktoks that don't mention their names but we all know who you guys are talking about because guess what it's it's annoying and you're not doing yourself a favor misery loves company but guess what it's not getting it from me or anybody else you need to stop feeling sorry for yourself and start taking responsibility for yourself and this is not directed at anybody it's just directed at people who are too afraid to make a change or are too afraid to look for change trust me when i say this it is a necessity in order to get better to find better things to even achieve greater things you must 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 keep going forward Remember guys, sharks die if they if they stop swimming for too long. Cuz pro progress to them is life. And for you guys, like I really do hope like some of you who are still thinking in the past or still stuck in the past, I really do hope that you guys find something that makes you happy or find something that you're able to put this negative energy into because when you do, you'll really find that it's not only the most therapeutic thing in the world, but it's probably the most satisfactory and the most beneficial because when you put your energy into something, whether it be um, something artistic, whether it be something related to business, whether it be related to something to um, anything, but when you do it in a positive manner, good things come from it. 
a lot of good things come from it guys i really do hope the best for everybody who listens to this podcast or even just takes some time out of the day to be like all right what is this fucker saying because at the end of the day i want the best for everybody i want people to be positive i want people to spread a positive message and as much as people are like no fuck that like i'd rather just be hateful and spiteful all you're doing is hurting yourself and all you're doing is just clouding your energy and you're not going to be happy you're just going to be miserable and i don't want that for everybody i mean everyone i know who's moving forward a lot of people don't want to see them winning but guess what you could be winning too if you just get up and go forward as well and stop dwelling in the past oh my god sorry about that guys i didn't mean to that was loud i have like a bunch of trash all over this floor that i need to clean up but um yeah i really do hope you guys kind of get the gist of what i was saying and can kind of um uh pick up what i'm throwing down because it's the truth like this is all toxic energy and if you don't have a way to like excrete it or to even channel it you're just gonna hurt yourself and you guys are just gonna find yourselves uh 20 years from now complaining about that one ex that broke your heart and you never got over it and that's really sad because if you're if you're saying this now in your 20s i can only imagine how people in their 30s or 40s are going to be when they're like oh yeah i was married it's just like dude or even if i was married or i was in a relationship with this person we lived together and they uh they uh just broke up with me or they were cheating behind my back it's like dude it's it's horrible to say but this happens to everybody this happens to people in the military who whose wives cheat on them that's a meme i think it's hilarious if you guys don't think it's hilarious that's cool too i'm a fucked up person um this happens to people who are just normal joes this happens to people who are attractive people who are ugly guess what that's the way the world works sometimes people change and they do their own decisions they make their own mistakes and they almost fuck up their entire world and sometimes they have to, but the thing is they must be held responsible and they have to move forward again because once you move forward you're able to you know figure stuff out you can't just stay hoping that things can get better you can't just put a band you can't just put a band-aid or a duct tape over a relationship that's falling apart and hope you know what i hope this saves the day it doesn't work like that you can't be thinking of, oh, what could I have done right? What could I have done to keep that person? It doesn't work like that. You need to move forward. You need to progress forward because when you progress forward, guess what? You'll start noticing that all that stuff that you wanted before doesn't matter now. You're just hanging on to a dream that is literally a memory. And guess what? you probably memorized it the wrong way that's gonna be it for your boy poppy wolf welcome back we're back we're not back we are back i'm tired sorry this is the go for go podcast episode four i'm glad you guys enjoyed it we did it with the new mic tell me if you guys enjoy my voice now with this mic because i really love how my voice comes out but i'll catch you guys in the next video um i'm definitely going to be I, I have to write some topics down there's so much stuff i wanted to talk about i didn't want to hang on the david dobrik stuff too much uh a teacher was a fun show i really like to talk about uh the friend zone was funny because i was watching impossible and that came up about the whole ron stoppable stuff um yeah so, and then the whole of course um moving forward thing i think that's one thing i really want everybody to focus on a lot is the moving forward because is probably the most impactful thing especially with the whole david dobrik stuff especially with like um um everything that can be happening in your life right now especially during covid i i get it guys i really do it's hard to move forward but it, it's necessary it's a necessary thing but yeah guys i'll catch you guys in the next episode peace love peace and love i love you guys bye bye